Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett and welcome back for some more EU4 nation speedforming, where I put my skills to the test and try to form nations as fast as I can. Last time we formed Ching and today we're going to be trying to form the Golden Horde. Coincidentally, this is also an achievement, so I guess technically it could also be called an achievement guide. By the way, less than 20% of you are subscribed, so if you want to go ahead and do that, then that'll get us closer to the goal of 25k for which I will celebrate by doing a special episode of this series with the Mongol Empire or the Roman Empire. And you guys have been crushing the like goal a little too hard recently, so I'm going to have to double it and ask for maybe a thousand likes. Alright then, Iron Man mode, let's begin. So reforming the Golden Horde is going to be one of the more difficult challenges of this series, since you have to rush Crimea before they can possibly become a March of the Ottomans, and you have to invade Muscovy at least once, if not twice. And then there are the hordes to deal with. So let's start with our rivals. I'll give these privileges to the estates and I'll take a bit of land. And here's the hoping we have some good generals. Not bad. And not bad. Okay, Crimea has allied up with Kazan, so I'm going to rival Kazan and we're going to go after Ryzan first. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit of looting real quick. And I'll pick up this reinforced speed dude. And yoink. I'm actually not going to raise this land because it's the very small portion of feudalism I'm going to have for a long time. So we'll eventually turn this into a state, actually. I'm also going to go ahead and ally Uzbek temporarily. I'll need his land later, but uh, for now he'll help me deter a couple of wars, hopefully. Alright, I'm going to declare on Crimea and co-belligerent Kazan so that I can bring in Uzbek on the promise of land. Let's start off by wiping out Kazan's troops. And then I'll go after Crimea. Uzbek only wants these three provinces, so they'll siege down Kazan for me. And I'll have no problem cleaning up Kazan's troops. Okay, I have no idea what Uzbek is doing right now. 19,000 troops and they can't seem to siege a single fort. Well, at least Crimea is done. Also, a couple of problems to deal with in Ryazan, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue. Alright, all that's left is the capital now. Alright, beautiful. We can take these three provinces from Kazan, and uh, it doesn't tell me whether or not Uzbek will be upset by this, but I'm going to assume they will be. So I can just give Uzbek a little bit of land, that should be okay. And we'll divide this money up a little bit. And now for the same thing with Crimea. These four provinces, war reps, and a bunch of money. Now I get perma claims on little bits of Russia. I'll also have to deal with no guy at some point, so I'll go ahead and rival him. And unfortunately, I was too late on Novgorod, so they're just going to get destroyed. Ooh, a bunch of stuff just happened there. Uh, first of all, our ruler died. Looks like we ended up with a 161, which is, man, the exact opposite of what I could use right now. Oh well, at least we get national unrest. Since Nogai is allied with the Timurids, and the Timurids haven't collapsed yet because Shah Rukh is still alive, I'm probably going to have to go after Muscovy next. But for that to work out, I'm probably going to need the next Miltak, so... Let's work on getting a little bit of feudalism. Alright, that core is done, so I can turn this into a state. And let's full core Ryazan. There we go, now I can technically embrace if I have enough money. Which I can get from the sale of titles. Alright, feudalism, let's go. Now I can grab tech 4. I must admit, I do feel a little bit under-equipped for this, but, uh, speed is the name of the game and we have things to get done. While they're still distracted in Novgorod, I'm gonna go ahead and try to take Moscow as fast as possible. And I'm hoping Uzbek serves a uh, pretty good distraction for his loyal subjects. Alright, Moscow has fallen, miraculously, at a 14%. So we're gonna rush down here and clean up those troops and see if I can find any Muscovy stacks, because... If Muscovy loses a bunch of men, then his subjects will become rebellious. It looks like everyone here is on Tech 3 still, so that should make our lives a little bit easier. Yeah, that tactics and morale bonus should definitely have us win pretty easily. There we go. I think the next step is to keep on fighting because I need enough army tradition to get myself a uh, guaranteed leadership of the host. And once I have that, I can get a lot more generals and more manpower. Alright, one stack has gone in here and uh, messed it up for the rest of them, so they won't be reinforcing on time. Well, we don't have many options, so I'm going to have to increase enlistment and uh, slacken a little bit. 
Don't mind me, just gonna go in here and uh, wipe a stack real quick. That gives me just enough army tradition to give guaranteed leadership of the host, which makes hiring generals a lot cheaper so I can slack in more often. Alright, Muscovy's now on his last legs, started to hire mercs, which is not a good idea, because these guys are not ready for war yet. So he's only giving me even more war score. So, after an excruciatingly long and painful war, I can go ahead and take these five provinces over here. I'm still gonna have to come back later for these two, but hopefully by that point I will have finished up my war with Nogai and Uzbek, and will be prepared to put the final nail in the coffin. Or I could just truce break, who knows. Whichever one doesn't get me killed, I guess. I'm a little low on manpower still, so it's time to slack in a little more. Okay, this is really stupid, but I also find it really funny, so I'm just gonna keep this guy. I feel like he'd be an absolute beast on the battlefield. Also, I don't really need this Crimea fort. Also, Uzbek doesn't like me because I decided not to give them any land this time, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and extort them for a bit of money, and they can break the alliance. Anyways, it's time to go to war again. So, we're off to a good enough start here. Well, until Chagatai arrived, of course. Okay, we're gonna end up losing these guys, but uh, I went ahead and replaced them already, so that's okay. Alright, no guy has been sieged down. I'm just gonna have to deal with Chagatai. The ultimate goal is, of course, going to be taking these two provinces, and maybe these ones up here, so I don't have to fight Uzbek for so long. Alright, we'll take care of this guy. Chagatai is being invaded by Oirat, so hopefully their war exhaustion will drop pretty soon. And no guy has no one left. So I can go and do a little bit of carpet sieging real quick. Alright, looking good with the full occupation of no guy. Chagatai doesn't seem like they want to leave yet, despite very much losing their war against Oirat. So Chagatai, who is currently having his home siege down, uh, has decided that he's leaving. And he's just going to attack me instead. Because self-preservation, am I right? Truly remarkable how the AI comes up with these plans. Yeah, how did that go for you? Right then, money, war apps, provinces, and we're done here. Okay, somehow I've become a great power actually, which is kind of funny. Not that I could really do much with it, but that's cool. So this truce here is going to last exactly three years, so I'll uh, basically see you guys then. There we go, next tech. Should be able to fight a little better now. Looks like someone certainly has been making a lot of friends. Well, hopefully this goes well. Don't you just love chasing the AI around for what feels like eternity? And finally get rid of you, jeez. He led me so far away that they're gonna end up re-sieging the war goal. God damn. Okay, nice corruption event. Let me just do that. All right, so far, so good. If I do a couple more battles and Occupy the capital, we should be good to go. Looks like a jam is actually at war with the Ottomans, so we might see them leave as well. That would make things much easier for sure. Well, this was pretty easy. Looks like we're just about done. Just have a couple more occupations to deal with, and we should be good to go. Alright, now I've sort of had the time to sit here and think and all that. And, um, reflecting back, I think it would have been better to have a shorter truce with Muscovy and take fewer provinces and then take the rest later rather than to, you know, half the truce break them. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good idea to think about that if you want to do this yourself. Because these provinces are only worth like 30% war score. So if I had taken like a 35, maybe 40% war score peace deal first and then came back for 100% peace deal, that would definitely, uh, fix the whole truce break problem. But you know, you live and you learn. All right, a jam's willing to leave. So we can 100% this peace deal. I waited specifically to get this massive stack of cash. And I can also pick up this gold mine, I guess. Alright, all that's left is to go over to Muscovy. And I can also become Defender of the Faith, which is expensive, but it does give me manpower and true faith provinces and morale of armies, which is incredibly important. Actually, what I kind of want to do is wait and grab Tech 6. The difference between Miltech 5 and Miltech 6 is like the most important one in the game. And I don't have much manpower right now anyway, so I might wait a little bit longer. And now we're ready. So let's get this party started. Let's go back up to neutral stability and reduce that war exhaustion. And of course the capital will be first. 
All right, capital's been taken. Next up, it's time to go stack hunting. All right, a couple battles later and we have our superiority. And all I need are these two provinces, so let's go and siege down Yaroslavl. All this land over here is useless, I don't really care if they siege it. Well, this shouldn't take too long. And we'll just do a little bit of carpet sieging as well. So, there we have it. The last two provinces I need to form the Golden Horde. And there it is. Now, I've seen people do Gold Rush several times, many much faster than mine. I think one of the biggest problems is that I was unwilling to break truces as often as I should've, and I wasn't as willing to go into significant debt and hire a bunch of troops. So the end result is that my economy is perfectly okay, no issues with it, but I did suffer a little bit on the time for that one. Overall, 25 years is not that bad, 31 years to spare, it's not a very hard achievement if you want to grab it yourself. You just have to be a little smarter than I was dealing with Muscovy. And maybe piecing out of different wars faster because I didn't really need as much money as I took from peace deals, so I could have pieced out earlier. But overall, I'd say not bad. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of EU4 Nation Speedforming, and let me know what nation you'd like me to speedform next. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you disliked it. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to all of the kind people over on Patreon. Starting with those we have in the general tier, Quiet Guy, Brennan Arsenault, Ben Greenhagen, Torvald, Dire Avenger, and Farron. Those in the Prince tier, Snow Raven, Rockbox2020, Robert Kaleno, and Bouncer Steve. In the King tier, we have Chewy Shoot and Natsuki. In the Elector tier, we have TFLJ Martis. And in the Conqueror of Worlds tier, we have The Watcher. Thank you guys so much for your pledges this month, I really appreciate it, and I just can't thank you enough.